Four down situation. Flacco's going to throw on third. Can't find anybody. Still standing there. Now he's going to be sacked by Clee Furl. Here's first and ten for the Yellow Jackets. Oliver. Quick pass and intercepted by Muse. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It's Tate Don't Lie. Welcome back. Welcome back. Don't Lie podcast. Just want to thank you, every single subscriber that subscribed. We're now over 100 subscribers. So we're at about 110. Oh, sorry, my bad, 112. So we're very excited about that. We'd like to thank every single one of you for subscribing. Uh, you guys leaving your comments, giving us feedback. We really appreciate that. Make sure you follow us at the Mark John NFL. That's me, Marcus Johnson, at the Mark John NFL. That's my man, BD Williams, at BD Williams 18. And we are the Tape Don't Lie podcast. Remember that. So make sure you guys follow us there. Make sure you, if this is your first time viewing this, hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, we're also on Apple and Spotify. So go ahead and check us out there. Just search Tape Don't Lie. Look for the Raider symbol. Go ahead and follow us. You know, follow our logo. And we'll get it going that way. And we'll, we're super excited for uh, to keep you this going. We're going into the season with this. So uh, expect a lot of big things from us, for sure. Expect a lot of big things. All right, BD, how you, how you feeling this week? I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, uh, I talked to my wife about how I'm going to be doing this for the next, you know, 16 weeks, tw maybe 20 weeks. You yeah. know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's, she's not super happy about it. You know what I'm saying? But some some things, you, you know, you just got to make sacrifices in life. Yeah. You, you got to make it work, bro. You got to make it work. <laughs> you got to make it work. It's only an hour. It's only an hour. It's right, only right. an hour. Just tell her it's only an hour. I mean, a lot of editing and mixing behind the scenes, but still. Right. It's still a lot of work, but you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we, we just, we're here to give them Raiders content, you know, all day, every day. We're going to be going over uh, a couple of little things. Of course, we're going to do our little, you know, side things, talk a little about training camp at the end, what we're seeing, you know, there's been some, uh, some cuts and things like that. Some big things going on with the Raiders, but today we're, we're focusing on defense, mostly been offense to start this off. Uh, you know, we've been going back and forth, you know, Brian Edwards, uh, we've going over the, the, the offense, what we want to expect to see. I went over Reds in office. Did a little Damon on that last week, but this week is all defense. So, so what you got for us this week, BD? All right, guys. Uh, so I'm going to go over Paul Gunther's um, blitz package, specifically the way that he likes to simulate pressure, and we'll talk about that uh, more on the show. Uh, should I jump right into it here? Let's do it. You know, you can jump right into it. Jump right into it. Go ahead, man. We'll, I, we'll, we'll surprise him a little bit with the next one. We'll surprise him with the last one. All right. There we go. All right. All right. Okay. So let's do this. All right. So we'll, we'll talk about Paul Gunther's simulated pressure package here. And Paul Gunther is a relatively conservative um, defensive coordinator in terms of the way that he likes to blitz. Okay. And one thing that he brought over from his time in Cincinnati is what's called the mug blitz. And this is a kind of a sneaky way, a crafty way when we're trying to cover a running back specifically. Okay. Now I want you to watch to hear Whitehead here. Okay. He is king this running back. And when that running back leaves, he leaves with him. Now you're probably saying, what, what do you, what the hell are you talking about here? This is not a, this is not a blitz. This is not a pressure. Okay. And, and you're right. Well, you're half right. And what I'm trying to sh highlight here is if this running back stays in the block, Tahir Whitehead's going to come with him. And you see Tahir Whitehead take a path towards as, as if he's blitzing, okay, and only start to peel out of the blitz when he realizes the, the running back leaves, okay? And what this does here is this creates a, cl a clock in the, running, in the quarterback's head when he sees, oh, you got all these guys over here, I feel like, you know, the quarterback's going to feel like there's pressure coming off the edge here when it's really just still a four-man rush. And so Paul Gunther, this is a big staple of Paul Gunther's office, offense. It's called a mug blitz or a mug path towards the, uh, uh, towards the quarterback where a, a linebacker is going to blitz the back and peel if he peels. Now, this is another example here. This is Nicholas Morrow. We see him at the snap. He's watching this running back, okay? This time, though, the running back stays into block. And so watch what Nicholas Morrow does. He just com he converts into a blitzer here, okay? It's not the most beautiful blitz by Nicholas Morrow, but what happens is, is the guard has to account for him. 
This is Kyle Long right here, right? Number 75. And he doesn't see Benson Maiola coming in here for a sack. Right? So this is just a crafty way that Paul Gunther likes to, to add some layers to his pressure package here by using what's called a mug blitz from his linebackers and sometimes his nickel corners as well. Okay. All right. And again, we see the running back stays in the block. So Nicholas Morrow says, all right, I'm going for it. And it turns into a five man pressure. Okay. Now the, the rest of what we're going to look over today are four man pressures but they're in the simulated pressure category. They're called Sims. Some people call creepers, call them creepers. Okay. A creeper. All right. Um, when you look at this, right. You know, and when the quarterback is looking at this, he's seeing one, two, three, four, five, six potential blitzers. And he's going to see, uh, <laughs> this is LaMarcus Joyner in a three point stance. <laughs> okay. So like the guy's definitely coming, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what he doesn't see until the last second is Cleveland Furl drop, okay, to replace LaMarcus Joyner in coverage. And what happens is uh, Joe Flacco knows the nickel's coming. He sees the nickel, and immediately his eyes fly over to this uh, tight end here who he thinks should be open because the nickel, the nickel got out of there, Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see the tight end, he's trying to work around Cleveland Furrow because he knows he has a hot route or a side adjustment because a blitz came here, okay? But Joe Flacco has to pat onto the ball because Cleveland Furrow jumped into the throwing lane, okay? And he ends up getting sacked. Now, what's special about this is that it looks like a blitz, okay? It feels like a blitz to the quarterback, but count how many guys are actually rushing the passer here. Okay, and we could speed this up here. Okay, so we only have four, a four-man rush. Even though the nickel is coming, we had Cleveland Furl. He was lined up as a three technique, and he's dropping. And then this linebacker also, we can watch him, you know, earlier on in the rev here. He's lining up in the B gap, but he goes and he jumps out to take away the hot route from the other side of the formation here. Okay, so again, it's a four-man rush, but it looks and feels like a blitz. And this is something that Paul Gunther likes to do a lot. It's a relatively conservative and safe way of blitzing and making the quarterback feel like he's under duress when you're still only sending form, a four-man pressure. Here's another example of a simulated pressure, and this time uh, – Cleveland Furrow is, again, going to be the one who drops. But instead of dropping into a zone, he's actually going to be in man coverage on this tight end. Okay. And he's going to cover the tight end. And what happens in this play is because they're expecting Cleveland Furrow to come over here, we're sending all three of these blockers over here, and it allows Max Crosby – to get a one-on-one -on, -one on the other side of the formation. Okay. So a really savvy way of scheming guys open or scheming guys into one-on-one -on -one situations. Now, something that Paul Gunther started getting into towards the end of the year is something that's called an odd front um, blitz package. And let's just break that down, what an odd front means for the fans here, okay? So generally, Paul Gunther is going to be in an even front, and we'll just look at this right here. This is an example of an even front. Okay, you have a three technique, a one technique, meaning outside shade of the, of the center. Three technique is outside shade of the guard. And then you have two ends on opposite sides. This is an even front. The majority of Paul Gunther's defense is an even front. Okay, now when we're talking about an odd front, you're going to have a defensive end outside of the tackle, a defensive end on the other side outside of the tackle, and you'll have someone else here, a no, uh, you know, a nose tackle head up on the center. All right. And 
a lot of times, you know, this is going to be obviously, a, uh, this is a nickel package. So we're not talking about a three, four defense, even though a three, four defense would still be considered an odd front. Okay. But this is in a nickel package. So this is a pass rushing package. That's an odd front. Okay. And in this particular situation, you have a nickel who can come a linebacker who can come and then this pass rushing specialist over here on the opposite side who can also come. And that's the guy who ends up coming. Okay. So again, feels like a blitz, but there's only four guys coming. And this is a, a big staple of Paul Gunther's defense. He doesn't want to send the house, you know, he's a relatively conservative blitz, uh, blitz play caller again. So sending four people and making it feel like a blitz is, you know, right up his alley. This is something that he wants to do. And this is really on the cutting edge of what, where football, defensive football is going. Uh, the next example here is, again, we're in an odd front. We have a nose tackle. We have two defensive ends. And then we have Keyshawn Nixon, who ends up being the dime. Okay, we're in, we're in a dime package here against the Texans. Okay, so he's a, a slot corner on one side of the formation. And instead of it being a linebacker or a pass rusher that's coming, it ends up being a slot corner. So there's a lot of variations, a lot of permutations that, that this blitz package can see. And they end up stopping um, Deshaun Watson short of the sticks here. So there's a lot of different variables and different people that Paul Gunther will have at his ex disposal to send when you get into an odd front like this. Another reason why I think that the odd front is here to stay is because Rod Marinelli is now, everyone knows about Rod Marinelli. And, I, you know, we could talk about uh, the technique that he'll teach to his uh, defensive linemen that are under his tutelage. We could talk about, um, you know, a lot of things, but just from a scheme standpoint, the one area that I'm very confident that Rod Marinelli's presence will rub off on Paul Gunther in the scheme department is going to be this odd front pa uh, pass rushing package. This is something that when you go and you look at Rod Marinelli's um, tape from the last, you know, five, six years when he was in Dallas, he got into this odd front pass rushing package quite a bit on third and long in third and long situations. Okay. This is something that he really likes to do having three defensive linemen only on the field. And I think it, how does that, it has a lot to do with how confident he is getting these three defensive linemen after the quarterback. Okay. And so again, here, if you look at it, who's coming, we have this linebacker lined up in the a gap. We have a pass rushing specialist. We have a nickel. The guys are, you know, any six of these guys could end up coming, okay? But only four come, so it's a standard pass rush, but they're coming from different angles, so it feels like a pressure. And now let's just look at what happened here, okay? Because we got this linebacker over here in the A-gap, this center is hopping out here to help, with the, uh, to help the guard on his side, okay, defend this rusher. Mm -hmm. And because we have two pass rushers over here this guard likewise is trying to kick out and help out this tackle with these two pass rushers here okay and the breakdown happens because no one ends up blocking this nose tackle all right and it's it literally it doesn't get easier than that so this is an example of a sack being schemed open i mean that's not yeah. necessarily technique that's just them being very confused so um, this, is, this is a reason why I think um, the dime package is going to be here to stay. Okay. Um, the three-man line, the odd front, uh, in, in terms of the pressure packages that the Raiders are going to start using uh, or continue to use in 2020, uh, I think it's going to be heavy with that odd front pass rushing package, especially because Paul Gunther started getting into that later in the year. Yeah, and, and I, I think that cre the creeper is uh... – a big one. It's one of my favorite pressures that I've seen because it can confuse quarterbacks. I mean, the best quarterbacks in the league, I mean, they'll figure that out. Like, you know, the elite ones, the, the top guys, but when you, the Raiders aren't going to face that many top guys this year. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. I mean, yeah. I mean, Baker, Baker Mayfield, the Titans ran creeper on him like crazy. He threw three interceptions. You know, it's it, it's for like the the average quarterback who you know reads things pre snap. 
and he sees the, the simulated uh, the pressure. He sees the, the five people come, and then one guy drops out, and only four, and he's already rushing up his process. Right. The, the normal quarterback, he's going to just kind of get rid of that ball. Like Joe Flacco on that play that you showed, he's a veteran. Right, he's been in the league like what, thirteen years at that point. Uh, at that point, so that 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 pressure, he's seen it before. He's probably right. seen it plenty of times, right? But when we play like, let's say we play like Drew Locke. I mean, Drew Locke. I mean, you don't see a lot of creeper pressure in college. He's only played five games in the NFL. That that creeper, right? That, that type of pressure, it might confuse somebody like him. That's, you know, he's expecting you to do one thing, you do the other he's going to panic a little bit and he, he get, he'll get rid of the football. Um, and, and, you know, right. Go ahead. And, and the, the really the funnest part about it is just how safe of a pressure it is. Cause you're only sending yeah. four guys and you're, so you're able to play, you know, um, seven guys in coverage or, uh, over the top of it. And you can get um, the more guys in coverage you have means uh, the more variables you can throw into and layers you can add into that coverage uh, on yeah. top of the, uh, on top of the simulated pressures. And um, you're also able to be creative as a defensive play caller with who you're sending, who's going to be that fourth guy and which one of the defensive linemen is going to end up dropping. Um, if, are they going to be a man? Are they going to be in zone? So there's a lot of variables that come with it more so than when you're sending five guys, you, you know, you start limiting yourself in terms of the coverages that you're going to be able to call with only six guys in coverage. So I think that that's um, a, a reason why it's really – that's on, what the cutting edge of football is. Paul Gunther ran it, um, you know, solid amount. But uh, I think that, you know, just from watching how often Marinelli was using these similar kind of simulated pressures, creepers, mm-hmm. uh, I think I think that the Raiders are going to – are in for a bigger dose of that in 2020. That That's beautiful. So let, let me ask you this. I, I got a question for you. So with, you know, with Marinelli and Gunther, you know, mixing in together, you know, I know Gunther doesn't like to blitz a lot. Do you see him blitzing more with, uh, you know, with Nick Kowalkowski, his, his ability to blitz? I mean, do you see him maybe taking those steps? I mean, because he's such a good blitzer. I mean, it's hard to think that they won't use that more often, you know, since he's out there and use his right. skill set. You know what I mean? Well, honestly, the sad part about it is if – even if he only blitzes as much as he did last year, okay, it's mm-hmm. going to seem like they blitz a lot more because Kwiatkowski is a really good blitzer, and so is Corey yeah. Littleton. Yeah. And the Raiders linebackers last year did not generate hardly any pressure. I mean, you look at Tahir Whitehead's uh, pressure snaps. I think he had one pressure uh, attributed to him last year, and the guy was being sent left and right and they, on yeah. these blitzes. Every game he had like three or four – at bats and he was only able to generate one pressure all year so someone like nick kwiatkowski you see all over his uh, all over his film he's a fantastic blitzer Corey lothan has fantastic speed around the edge they're gonna be able to use these guys um in creative ways so it's it's gonna i'm guessing it's gonna seem like they're blitzing a lot more but the reality is they're probably just gonna blitz as just as much as they did last year it'll just be more effective yeah it'd be more it will actually work this time. Right. <laughs> right. It will actually work. And then the, maybe they'll be able to play some better coverage behind it. So he feels more confident too. Cause that's the yeah. big thing. I mean, the coverage behind it last year, I mean, you didn't have that opportunity to try to generate pressure. I mean, they had to go with four um, to try to, you know, to, and play the linebackers back to make sure that they could even, you know, have any type of coverage because they were worried about that. And I think this year, with even adding Littleton and uh, Kawakowski and how they're gonna um, and how they're they're pretty good against the co- they're pretty good coverage linebackers. I mean, I know I know Nick's not as good as Corey. I mean, Corey's elite to, to be honest. He's a, he's an elite pass coverage guy. I mean, he's not an elite overall linebacker, but right. in pass coverage, I mean, right. he's basically a damn nickel corner. So yeah. he, I mean, he is you know one of the elite guys in coverage, right? And no, I think that's that's gonna take this defense to another level, anyways. I think that's a big deal. I don't think people realize how big of a deal he is back there to help out. But I mean, I think it's going to be, I think it's the defense is going to be a lot better. And they're just, it's just going to, they're just going to look better. They're just going to feel better. I think they're going to make more plays. And I think that's, that's what they need. They, the, def- the defense just need to make more plays. I mean, they don't do anything. They're just like there. So <laughs> if they, if they can help, you know, I mean, if they can help and make some plays, Shoot, I mean, bro. Yeah. The sky's the limit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, t- yeah, you're telling me. I mean, I know yeah. you're going to chart the uh, Raiders' offense this year. I'm going to chart the Raiders' defense. And if it was as bad as doing it last year, I- I'm not going to lie. I quit halfway through the year. 
Charlie, he did. I was like, I'm not even going to do this anymore. This is, this is torture, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I tried Charlie in the defense in 2018. I couldn't do it either. So I was trying to do oh, both. God. Yeah, no, no, no. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, the, the offense, you know, because it's funny, Charlie, the offense, like, you know, saying like the Jets game. I talked to this on Twitter, man. I couldn't do the Jets game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't get past the first quarter. It was ugly. It just pissed me <laughs> off. It was just pissing me off. You're not going to gain anything from that game anyway. So you, might yeah, you know, well, you know, like, what, what am I learning? Yeah, you might I feel as well like they, quit. Just, they just tainted it anyways. I feel like they got yeah. down. They're like, whatever. Right. Let's, let's just go home. Let's get ready for the Chiefs. And then they got killed the next week anyways. But uh, yeah. All right. So yeah. So those, those are the simulated pressures. Uh, you know, looking at Paul Gunther's, you know, blitz schemes and then how Rod Mary Nelly is going to add in there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that dynamic goes, uh, you know, see how much influence Marinelli really, really has on this defense. They, I mean, they're both two high guys. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, like, how much power Gruden actually gives to, Gun- to uh, Marinelli and his decisions. Like, is he guiding Gunther? Like, what is, what is, what is he really doing in the background? Because, you know, he's, he's just not the defense alignment coach. I, I, I'm not going to – I mean, he's not Brinston Buckner. Like, Brinston Buckner was there to work on the technique, get those, guys, get those boys ready to go. Rob Manetti is there to do that as well. But he brings a lot more yeah, he, you're history. Right. He bring, <laughs> yeah, he brings an amazing amount of experience. So it would be silly, really, like if we're just being honest, it would be silly – if Paul Gunther was, you know, saying, just stay in your lane, Marinelli, just coach the defensive line. Like, come on. Of course he's going to say, what do you think about, the, you know, the entirety of the defense? He's not going to just um, put Marinelli into a bucket. We're talking about a Hall of Fame worthy coach, a Super Bowl yeah. winner. So, For sure, for sure. All right, guys. Uh, so, you know, every week we go into a rookie, right? We've been going into some rookies. Uh, we even had uh, BD break down Amir Rob- uh, Amik Robinson. I said Amir Robinson. Amik Robinson, you know, out of uh, Louisiana Tech, uh, who's, you know, just got his number changed. He's excited about that. You know, he's, he's about to, his role is even bigger because, you know, the release of Prince, uh, uh, I can't even say his name. I'm just going to say Mukumar. Prince. Mukamara. Mukamara, Prince of Mukamara. I should know that. He's, he's from my hometown, so I should know that. Oh, where are uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, with, with the release of that, and then, you know, we're going over some rookies, and, you know, so make sure you check out that breakdown, too. Uh, we are going to be doing some, doing some shorts, uh, so make sure you check out, check those out. We have more of those coming out uh, in the next, right, getting ready for the season. So make sure you check out the Amik Robinson. Like I said, once once again, make sure you subscribe to us to make sure you keep all the content going. So, but this week, I'm going to be going over a much-talked-about guy, you know, who's supposed to come in, very controversial pick, I mean, people say that Damon Arnett was very controversial, but this guy was taking the top 100. Wasn't really a top 100 guy on most draft boards or draft gurus, what they would say. They said he was more of like a, a day three guy. But you, the, the Raiders, they must have felt something. Um, and that guy's name is Tanner Muse. So we're going to be going over Tanner Muse today. And, you know, Tanner Muse, he had a great combine. Uh, he ran that 4 4 1. You know, he had a good vertical leap. We talked about last week how he didn't really run some of the other drills, but he had a lot of buzz for him going into the draft. So, I mean, the Raiders, we we could say like, hey, they reached, right? But maybe the Raiders knew something that, or they heard something about Tanner Muse and they really, really liked him, right? They thought he could help right away with special teams, which he will. He will help right away with special teams. I already know that. Uh, But we're going to be going over his game a little bit and his transition to linebacker, which is the, the main thing that we're talking about. I mean, can he actually do that? And we're going to be trying to go over those factors and see what we can uh, decide that ourselves here. So, you know, first things first, we're going to be going over his actual run defense. All right. Now, Tanner Muse is, is a pretty good run defender. He, he does come down. He's a great tackler. We're going to be seeing a couple of instances where he actually makes plays and understands everything he needs to do. But we got to keep in mind that th- these are safety plays, right? So let's check this out. Him as a run defender, right? Uh, we got him uh, against Wake Forest here, lined up right here at safety. He's, kind of, he's basically in the box. I mean, this is goal line. So you can see him in the box here, and he's going to be coming through this gap right here, right, which uh, is the C gap. He's going to be coming through the C gap uh, to try to make a play through the run. He's going to be uh, going off these two guys. you got Justin Foster right here. Um, 
I really don't know who this guy is, but I do know Justin Foster, and th- this guy's a beast right here. I, we're gonna I'm gonna be talking about him a little bit in a second, but he, he's a beast. He, he he's a cleanup, right? These linebackers, this Clemson defense is awesome. So you're gonna see that as well. But let's you know let's concentrate on Muse here. So let's watch him make a play. And you see, watch him come through the gap. He understands it. He already reads it. He knows what his read is. He knows he's going right after that running back, right? Breaks down, boom, nice, beautiful tackle. Cleans up. And this dude's like a wrestler, so he, he has some great celebrations. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So hit it one more time again. Look at that great wrap-up. He rarely misses. Ta- Once he gets his arms around you, he rarely misses. So you, you're going to notice that, too. He's a good form tackler. Great tackler. Great form. Yeah, he's a great tackler, man. Great. Great tackler, yeah. So you come through again, right through that C-gap, reads it perfectly, breaks down, boom, great tackle, right? Another great tackle. So that's a little bit of Tammy. So this 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 is a, a big play because that's that's up here, right here, that's A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon's what, 240 pounds. I want you to th- remember that before we go through this, right? So he's 240 pounds. We got Tammy up here at the center. He's going to go right for the D gap. That's his responsibility. So he's got the outside here. You see this right here? You got the outside. So he's coming this way through that, right? And we got him and A.J. Dillon. Like I said, A.J. Dillon's 240 pounds. So remember that. He's coming downhill. He's breaking down. All right, watch this form tackle. This is just beautiful. Boom, look at that. That's like, that's like textbook. He's got his head to the side, head up. Look at his base for that tackle and just able to lift. Like that, that's that's like what you see, like, you know, it's pop warner drills and the the, the to try to get that perfect form. That's what they teach. That's right there. And then he's able to lift, lift him up, wait for help, bring him to the ground. Right? And then he's I'm, I'm surprised to see AJ Dillon run with such high pad level, honestly. That's uh, yeah. trash. Like you gotta you gotta lower your pads. <laughs> you gotta lower your pads. Two, I know. 240, come on, man. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm saying. Look, cause, cause look how low yeah. Muse gets. That's a good point. Muse gets uh, a whole lot lower, you know, than AJ Dillon does. Low so, man wins. Low, low man, man wins. wins. Right. So he's a lot lower. He's right there. Look at that. It's beautiful. Run through it. Wait for your teammates. Stands him up. Yeah. That's textbook. And then you know, at the end, we get a little flex. I'm saying this guy's a wrestler, bro. <laughs> he's a wrestler. He had a little flex at the end. He knows it. He knows it. Look at, look at me just lifting up AJ Dillon. He knows it too. Boom. You gotta love that man. So that's what I'm saying. So you you can see like why the 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 Raiders liked him, just because you know he's 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 a smart player. Like he is, he does have the intelligence to play in the NFL and play defense in the NFL by his understanding. So you see, this is kind of similar, right? He's got the outside, and he's going to make just a similar great tackle here. Boom, right? Low man, right? Good wrap-up, able to hold it up, bring him down. That's that's, that's textbook, bro. That's Wait, textbook did, he, did he just do the splits? Yeah, basically. Check yeah, him out. Check him out. Whoa. <laughs> he just did the splits, bro. My man has crazy f- flexibility <laughs> here. Right, I, I would so, I would never have played another down if I did that. I guarantee you. <laughs> Look at that, bro. Ugh. Oh my right? goodness. So I mean that that's just that's just beauty. That's beautiful right there. All right. All right so let, let's talk about him playing linebacker a little bit though, because to play linebacker you got to defeat blocks, right? You got to be able to defeat blocks at the at the second level. I mean, if especially where he is going to play because. Just from his tape, and I'll probably go over a little bit deeper, I, I kind of see him as more of a – his transitional linebacker, to me, I feel like is a middle linebacker. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more um, once we get into more of his movement skills and stuff like that. And, you know, but you already see why, because he, he's, he's a smart player. He'll understand the defense. You, you, you'll you know that he'll be able to get you in the right play. Um, but it's it's more worrisome about him get defeating blocks, right? Because, I mean, if, if he's playing middle linebacker or he's playing any of these linebackers and, you know, the, the guy comes to the second level or these guys start, you know, he's got to take on guards and mm-hmm. tackles. And he's not to just be taking on tight ends anymore or, or wide receivers as a safety. You know, right. he's going to be at the second level. To take, he's going to be taking on guards and he's going to have to learn how to 
play linebacker from that position. So, so you see him here on this play. This could be a little bit of a split zone action here, right? He's, he, and he, he plays as well, right? If we go back a little bit on this one, you see that he he does play what he's supposed to do. He's he's this is what he's supposed to do, right? But let's just talk about this as more as a linebacker, right? If if he was a linebacker and he was coming to make this play, you want him to see him use his hands a little bit more to engage, right? Boom, kind of just he's basically just blowing this play up. You know, he wants it to to be able to cut it back inside for forty seven to clean up, which like I said, he's a monster. But you just kind of want to see him have a little bit more physicality. That's basically what I see. He's, I mean, he's a linebacker. You want to see him to be a little bit more physical, right? But that, that this was this is more of a of him understanding his responsibility, which comes back to him being how smart he is, right? But you still want to see him be a little bit more physical, use his hands, and try to shed these blocks, and you know, try to make that play too as well, right? And then you know, because let's say that you know, we'll see on another example here on this next play of where it is, is basically the same look, same split zone, but he's a little bit higher and a little bit more out of position, and he ends up just getting knocked to the ground, right? And, that, and that's, you know, that's not something you want to see if he's playing linebacker and he has to come down, right? And he, he's getting knocked over by tight ends and stuff like that. Like, is, is, does he really have the physicality to play linebacker? Is he, is he able to be physical, shed blocks? Because, I mean, your hands, I mean, I know for, for linemen and D-linemen, hands is important. But hands are, are important for linebackers, too. I mean, they got to be able to shed, make blocks. They got to be able to avoid blockers. They got to have the quickness to do that. They got to be able to take on blocks, too. So, yeah. I mean, it, it is important for them to, for them to do that. And then we don't see that a lot from Tanner Muse on tape. I mean, he's, to be honest, I mean, he's naturally is a safety, naturally. I mean, that's what he plays like. I mean, he, he, he we'll get into his athleticism in a little bit, but you could see, you know, you just, you just got to be more physical on this play. Like, why are you getting knocked over by a tight end, right? If you're getting knocked over by a tight end like this and you're out of position and, you know, this guy came and cleaned up, which, you know, I kind of want to – I kind of just want to show how good this dude is for a second, if I can get this – go back a little bit. Because you see 47, he, the way he plays this behind him, this guy right here, watch him just come clean up, right? And just understanding this gap, he cleans it up. But let, let's just say 47 doesn't get there because not every linebacker is like that, right? Not every linebacker is that good who's be able to hide behind blocks and have patience and fill his gap like that. Let, let's say that guy was late to the gap. I mean, that's a that's a hole that Tanner Muse has open. He, and, he, yeah, of course, he does have to, he does to hold the edge and keep that make sure that guy makes that play. But you still want to see some more physicality out of him as a linebacker, all right? Because, I mean, that's the transition. We're, we're talking about – him playing linebacker. He's not playing safety. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not even designing a hybrid role for him. So he's playing linebacker. Right. So we have, that's what we have to understand when we're watching some of this stuff. All right. So th this play is, is a little bit what I'm talking about with the physicality and being able to get off blocks. And cause this is a, this is a tight end. This is the same guy for the previous play that was blocking him number 86 and kind of watch how he just easily handles Tanner downfield. Right. I mean, he's definitely got to get off his block. He's got to be able to, like I said, this, this goes back to using your hands, being able to shed, getting your hands inside, shed this guy. I mean, it's a tight end, right? You he's got to be able to shed this guy and make this play, right? And he's able to the guy to get extra more yards. Now, of course, he has great hustle. He's a great hustler. He, he has all types of hustle skills. He is a big, big hustler, right? So he's, he's on his hustle mode. He gets back, and he ends up making the tackle. But we'll go back to this once again. We see it in slow motion, right? I mean, he's, he's getting easily handled by this tight end, right? And he's not even trying to engage and shed him. He's trying yeah. to go around him. It's, it's, just, it's too yeah, passive. Right. It's, it's too passive. He's got to be a lot more violent right here. Yeah, he's got to be super violent. He's got to be a whole lot more violent than, than what he's showing, right? And, and since he's not doing that on this play, he allows this guy to get more yards. You, you want to be, you, I mean, he, he's, I mean, if you go back, uh, I'll go back a little bit here. I'll watch it one more time. Him making the play. Right. I mean, 
right? We got the we see we see it, right? We see it right away. He sees a play, but he he just gets pushed out. Needs him to be way more physical than that if he wants to play linebacker in the NFL. Because, like I said, he's gonna be going up against guards and tackles and centers, and those right. boys are gonna be three hundred plus pounds, right? They're gonna be professionals. Yeah, and if he can't get off blocks from a tight end, it's a little worrisome. So it's it's the transition for him. It's gonna to be tough. It's gonna to be a tough transition, and it's a little nerve wracking for me, honestly, with with the transition that he's he has to make for him to be successful at the next level. All right, so we're gonna go over the the big elephant in the room, uh, which is playing in space for Tanner Muse. Now, you know, the big knock on Tanner Muse is that he's stiff, right? Um, I talked about it last week a little bit. I kind of made a joke yeah. about it, how he didn't do some of the drills at the combine. And it's true. He didn't do the three cone. Um, he didn't do uh, any of those agility drills at the combine. And you can kind of see why based on tape. But we're, we're going to start off on this play, which kind of shows his his instincts and smarts and understanding, right? So... Uh, we got him against Wake Forest again, right? Here he is playing a little uh, single high, right? Got a little single high here. And he has an understanding. So he, he's kind of baiting Freeman to this throw because if, if you uh, go back, we'll go back a little bit. Right, you see... Baiting him into this throw. Like, he's kind of just staying patient. You kind of see him just kind of just hanging in there. He's just hanging, right? And then he uh, forces Newman. Sorry, I said Freeman. Forces Newman into this throw, right? And he's able to make a play on it. Interception. And, of course, he got his little funky dances. I'm telling you, he's a wrestler. He's got his little funky dance there. And we'll see, once again, slow motion, how he baits Newman, right? We got a fake screen. Wide receiver screen. Newman thinks he's not going to be able. To, he's going to be able to get the football there. Nope, not today. That's a great play by Tanner Muse, right? But I mean, that's that's basically him being smart and using his instincts to make a play. And Brett, you know, we talked about it last week. Clemson's defense will have you NFL ready in the brain, so you could see it with a play like that, like this, that he's able to make plays like that because his intelligence, he understands it. He understands it's, it's a fake screen. He knows what they're trying to do, and he's able to come up and make a play. Great play. All right, so let, let, let's, let's, let's get into the, the realness here, some of the real stuff here. So we, we got him in man-to-man coverage, right? And, you know, we talked about his stiffness a little bit, right? So here he is. He's man-to-man. Uh, this is a man-to-man across the board. He's coming down. He's taking this man in the slot. This is him right here. Uh, Tanner Muse up against this man in the slot. And this is this is a this is a, a play where you kind of get to see everything that you would think why he was considered stiff coming in up to the next level, right? And why he was kind of had that knock against him. You're gonna see it all in this play track. This is this is why he was drafted to be a linebacker. Yes, yes, this is why he's not a safety, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of see his back pedal is a little ugly. It's kind of He's like already kind of tripping over himself with his back pedal. It's not really a natural back pedal. Yeah. You can already tell that he's kind of sideways. He's not really, he's already kind of out of position with this. I mean, if this guy's coming inside, cause the way he's almost kind of always almost in half turn a little bit that it, it's, it's easy for him to, to already come inside. You could already see it. Like even if he just didn't have a much wiggle with him, as soon as he cut inside, it would be Tanner has to flip his hips all the way to even come and drive on the football already. He's already out of position here, right? So, and then of course we get that. We get the, we get the this guy running the post route, and now Tanner is he's basically he's straight up and down. He's flat footed. He's not going to be able to drive and get onto this post, right? And then he takes a false step. So let me go back. I got to get back. <sighs> oh, yeah, that was big. <laughs> so let me go back a little bit. To the false step here. All right, here we go. Boom. Right? The false step. So now he's already completely beat. Like, and you have to understand this safety is right here. So the safety, he's he's covering these other routes. He's coming down. There's nobody back here. 
All right. So I want you to understand that there's nobody back here behind Tanner Muse. And this guy is wide open and Tanner Muse is trailing by at least a full yard. This is about a full yard of separation, right? Maybe even a, might even be like a yard and a half. It's about a yard and a half of separation right there. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty ugly because like his, his false step and he was already out of position from, from the start. So you kind of see his stiffness. Like he doesn't have the, the change of direction to play safety. Right. But you, you kind of makes you wonder with that change of direction, would he be able to play coverage at linebacker too? Like, is he be able to guard? Let's say he gets the, the design one-on-one against him and Alva Kamara. Is he, is he be able to hang with Alva Kamara's wiggle based on the way he's able to flip his hips and stuff like that? I think it's, it's very, it's a little bit worrisome. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little worrisome. I mean, this ends up being one of the worst throws you ever seen in your life, and he gets a pick. <laughs> and <then I> celebrate. <laughs> that's right. that's the crazy part about Tanner Muse film is like you see so many so much bad technique, and then he makes a play, and you're like, wait, how <laughs> did that even happen? Yeah, it's it's called college football, bro. That's yeah. what has to happen, right? Right. Yeah, you see, like it's just like look, look, it's look, not look natural. at his foot. It's yeah, not look at natural. His foot. Look at his foot, bro. Like it is, uh, it is so, it's bad, man. It's it's really bad. Yeah, and and, and then he's he's all behind, and, and even trying to to get his footing to get back into position, he's out of place. He's kind of just tumbling over himself, but then he gets lucky and he gets an interception. Right, Finish. and then, and then he's happy. He's dancing, getting his wrestling moves on. You he know. finished. He finished the play. Yeah, but I mean that—that's that, that's how you gotta look at it. I mean, he is—he is a hustle player, and that's why he's uh, such a, a big special teams player too, because he's a hustle man. But that—that's just not. This is not a good look right there on that play. But he—he he got it, and, and I'm gonna—I'm gonna show you how bad this play could have been on this look from the end zone look. All right, so stop it right here. You see the guy coming. There's nobody behind him. All he had to do, I mean, he has the quarterback is the most perfect lane for this throw. All he has to do is just, I mean, he didn't even have to like be pretty with it. He just could have just hit him. Just could have gave him a nice little toss, and it would have been fine. And uh, it's just he throws it right to Tanner. Right to Tanner. That's such a terrible throw. <laughs> like, how do you know how you do that? All right, so, <laughs> all right, so. This is the next play, and we're going to kind of get into him in space. And, you know, uh, this, this is when you kind of worry about is he going to be able to handle NFL speed too, which is a big thing. Can he handle NFL speed with his stiffness and his lack of change of direction skills and, and basically kind of lack of uh, agility and movement skills, right, which, which you want to see from an NFL linebacker. You got – speed is great, right? We all love speed. You want linebackers these days to run four sixes and stuff like that and, and, and have that speed and have that athleticism. But you also want to have linebackers that can move that are overall athletes, right? Not yeah. just straight line guys. Um, right. You take, you take a quick linebacker over a fast linebacker any day, honestly. Ex- exactly, right? So speed, speed is just the cherry on top. If you can't do the other stuff right, who cares? Exactly, 100%. So here we got, we got Tanner Muse here again, right? And coming around and in and around. Right, and he comes a little too fast. He breaks down a little too early, right? And he's just about to get worked here. Let's just watch him. Oof, right? But then he comes back. He doesn't give up. He makes the play, right? So he's a hustle guy. Man. He, he, that's, that's really what he is. He's a hustle, hustle football player. And, and I think Mayock and them, that's what they love. They love the character behind it. They love the character they love the guy. They love character guys. They know that he's going to come in. He's probably going to work hard. He's going to work his butt off to learn linebacker, right? And, you know, you're going to just hope that he can develop. But things like that, like, it's just big whiff. Like, he's kind of he, – sometimes he's just kind of a highlight reel waiting to happen, and he's not a good highlight reel. Like he, he has had a lot of low lights just like this, and he, he's just kind of breaking down too early. He just kind of just looks stupid. It's like just like looks stiff. And he kind of just looks out of it. You know what I mean? Ugh. Don't like that. And then, and I sorry, I'm sorry I had to do this to him on my video, but <laughs> <laughs> this one, Justin Jefferson uh, makes him just start. I, I, don't even, that, I don't even know that's natural. I don't know if that's a natural thing that could happen to you. 
This is I just. Yeah, he looks like he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sniper, bro. He got sniped. Yeah, bro. he got sniped right there. He's looking I, around. He's looking around for his ankles at the end of that play. Oh man, and but but that goes back to. I mean, if you're a natural athlete, th- does that happen to you? Do you think? I mean, uh, yeah. If you, I think, like if I think. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, if you're not na- like just just a natural athletic person, and I understand, I understand that you know everybody got wiggles. You know, everybody can get it sometimes. And if you, if you see a guy, even how athletic you are, you know, you you see players getting juked out out of out of their shoes. I mean, you I mean Jacobs does it to to the some of the best players in the NFL all the time, right? But with some of these movement skills and the stiffness that he has is very worrisome when you see these things in college, right? Now, if this was, if this was like his first year in the NFL, he's going up against, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody who would shake him out his shoes, like who they'd play this year. I'm thinking like, I mean, they'll go back to Alvin Kamara, somebody like right. that, right? Christian Alvin Kamara's, right? And he's learning and he's getting juked by Alvin Kamara. That's fine. But I mean, the, the guy, first guy who juked him, is that guy going to play in the NFL? We don't know. You know, he, he might not even play in the NFL. Right. And then we got Justin Jefferson, who is an NFL player. And he's kind of got him tripping over himself and going backwards a little bit. And, you know, it's just not a good look um, for him with his movement skills. And he's just stiff. And there's really nothing, no way around it. You can't, can't hide it. He, it, it makes you question, does he have the athleticism to be able to play linebacker? Or even, I mean, they, they had to move from safety because he couldn't, but does he even still have the, the athleticism to even play linebacker itself? So, I mean, it's it's just, it's a, it's a lot of things, a lot of worrisome things um, that you see from him on tape and you make him feel like, you know, the, they, they reached a little bit for him. Um, but... You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they got to figure out something on how to how to work and and get him to where he needs to be at this point. To be honest, yeah, I think a lot of a lot a lot of the things that you were showing. First of all, I think that he could clean up some yeah. of his techniques, mm-hmm. right? And, and so we're talking if we're talking about skills, skills are something that you can learn, right? Yeah, um, you know, you can't teach a guy to like all those hustle plays that we were showing. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to teach a guy to do that. They either have that in them or they don't. Right. And I think that goes back to what you were saying before the reason why um, he was drafted by the Raiders and where he was drafted is because they're not interested in trying to coach and motivate guys, Co- yeah. coach them, coach them up in, in the, in the wanted department. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just want guys who are, you know, self-motivated and um, intrinsically motivated guys. And then they're willing to, you know, maybe take a sacrifice on some other things and, and say, maybe our guys, maybe our coaching staff can help them along in these other areas that they're deficient. Um, but like the, those hustle plays, that's a non-negotiable. Every single player on, on the, that the Raiders have drafted on defense has all those hustle plays, right? Yeah. Look at Max Crosby last year, look at Cleveland Furrow. He's, like there, there's, I, I, I made a whole highlight film of Cleveland Furl chasing things down to the opposite side. You know, Jonathan Abram never gives up on a play. You yeah. know, it goes on and on and on, guys. Uh, so, um, there, that's a non negotiable for them. They'll take that above, you know, maybe guys who are phenomenal, phenomenally athletic at any yeah. position, but you see them kind of, you know, jogging. They probably, they wouldn't even take that guy, right? Yeah. So, like it or not, Raider Nation, that's the kind of player. First and foremost is the hustle in the hustle yeah. department. You know, they're great. Gonna, they're going to be great athletes in the first round. And then you might see some just okay athletes, you know, later on. But, you, you know, you're not going to question their desire to play football. Yeah. And I agree with that. You know, I mean, you're not going to question the desire to play football or anything like that. I just think with him, I feel like that the way that he was using a Clemson defense – if they're going to play him strictly at linebacker, I don't know if that's going to be the best idea. I think they need to try to figure out how to use him. Because so I think if they figure out how to use him and be intelligent with it and maybe have him come in and blitz a little bit off the edge, right? Have him blitz off the edge because he's got the speed and he's a good blitzer, right? He, he can blitz. 
He's a good tackler, right? Or even in situations where, you know, we're at goal line and they could bring him in and, you know, maybe have play three safeties just in case, just in case, you know, him come down with a run and Corey Littleton can kind of supplant what he does and, and work him in that way. Because I think some of the things that he does is like his tackling and his understanding. And I know he's, he's, he's going to be able to pick up the defense and understand a lot of things like that. I think they, just, they need to have a plan to how to use him because he's just not the normal. He's such a, a tweener, right? He's, he's doesn't have the athleticism to play safety in the NFL. Right. But I don't know if he has, if he can actually play full time linebacker too. So they got to be able to figure that out. They got to kind of have a plan. He's kind of like Isaiah Simmons to me, which I, I don't want to compare him to Isaiah Simmons because Isaiah Simmons is a freak athlete, right? He's the freak, freakish, one of the most freakish athletes we've ever seen, right? Running 4-3 and stuff at his size and all those things. But, you know, Tanner, Tanner Muse is, doesn't have the other side of the athleticism that Isaiah Simmons has. He does have the straight line speed and Clemson kind of like intertwined those two a little bit, right? Clemson yeah. kind of intertwined him. So – and not everybody is, is is as creative as Venables either, too. So, right. uh, yeah, you <laughs> that's Here's thing. what I think. I think yeah. playing with Isaiah Simmons hurt Tanner Muse's development, okay, because if Isaiah Simmons was just a regular safety, okay, Tanner Muse would have been playing closer to the line. Of yeah. Yeah. From, you know, f- for the last, you know, three years or however many years he was uh, starting at Clemson, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but because Isaiah Simmons, you have this guy who's just like, a unicorn once in a lifetime type of player, you've got to use him and, and do all the different things that you have to do. And Tanner Muse was the guy who was going and, and replacing where Isaiah Simmons was leaving, you know? Yeah. So, it, it, you know, everyone talks about I, how versatile Isaiah Simmons was. Well, I mean, someone else had to go and, and be, and do something else in the defense too. Right. Yeah. So Tanner Muse was, you know, having to, uh, make up for where Isaiah Simmons was leaving and vice versa. But I think if, if Isaiah Simmons was just a normal safety, you know, Tanner Muse would have been playing linebacker a long time ago. Okay. Uh, and, and, and so I think that that hurt his development a little bit. So I, I got two things to say. First of all, I like Tanner Muse a lot. Okay. Yeah. Two years ago when they were in the college football playoff and they, you know, they won that national championship, you know, um, leading up to that game, I saw Tanner Muse make so many plays. Yeah, you know he's a fantastic. He he was in college a fantastic playmaker for that team, right? Yeah. Um, and then when I went and started watching the film, I was like, okay, this guy it's not a natural safety, like not yeah. even close. Um, his back pedal, it just we saw a little glimpse of it, but you know, consistent throughout his film, he has really high back pedal, not not, not natural for him at all, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that that was super interesting um about him so i i went into the film this is a guy who i went into the film liking a lot and then leaving with a lot more questions than i even had when i started watching this film and then the other thing i'll say is nick kwiatkowski right Mm -hmm. Corey littleton Mm -hmm. now raekwon mcmillan right yeah Mm -hmm. nicholas morrow tanner is the fifth linebacker he's not gonna play (laughs) yeah okay you're right yeah so yeah i mean the Raiders need to just let him develop, give him a full season under his belt, spot duty at best, playing a lot of special teams. And we're talking about Tanner Muse being a starter down the line, you know, year two, year three, probably that's most likely when it's going to happen. It's if it happens this year, we've had a lot of injuries in front of him at line at the linebacker position, you know, because yeah. if Corey Littleton gets hurt, Nicholas Morrow has got that job. If Nick Kwiatkowski gets hurt, that's Raekwon McMillan, who has his job. You know, so yeah, Darren Muse is not yet backing up either of these, either of those linebacking spots that's true. Um, to start out the season. So I, I know there's a lot of Raiders fans who, who think Tanner Muse is going to, you know, play a lot. He's not going to play a lot on defense, guys. And if he does, we're in a bad, bad situation. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it, he he has the work ethic, and we also oh, we we could you could tell that he has the work ethic. He has the smarts. He has the the grind in him. Right. He has oh, the hustle. I like him. I like right? him. Right, right, and and I can see why they like him. Right, but it, it is gonna it's it's gonna take time. There's no way that you, he's gonna be helping this team uh, right away. And then right. and that, it, it, it more it more goes back to this is where, where they took him. Let's say they took him in the fifth round. 
would we would be even kind of be feeling these things about him the way we do? I think it's because they took him at pick number 100. They That's where they took him. So he has a little bit more expectations because, you know, the first three guys, first three rounds, they never get cut. You know, they, you know, they're, they're usually roster locks. Right. So he has a lot of expectations around him just because he's a top 100 guy. You go top 100, you're going to have some expectations. And, and I think if, if he was taken where maybe I feel like he should have been taken, I think that, you know, we'd have a lot less expectations. He'd have a lot more time to develop. And we wouldn't be like, where's Tanner Muse calling him a bust off of some bad practices, right? We would, we would have more time to have him develop, learn, learn the position, like you're saying, learn to use his hands, pr- probably put some weight on, because I still think he needs to put some weight on, get a little bigger, kind of sacrifice that speed a little bit, get, get you know, maybe get to like 245 or something like that, you know, put some more weight on, put some more strength so he could take on linebackers and so he could play against the run, use his excellent tackling skills. And then, you know, it, I, I think a coverage, um, I, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know if that's ever going to be a thing, but I think that he could still be a, a solid linebacker. Yeah. He's got, he's got a lot, he's got a lot to work on for sure. Yeah. We'll I mean, not, not every linebacker in the NFL can cover and there's, they still, a lot of guys still have jobs. So <laughs> it, it, it's important, but you know, it's not, it, it's, it's, you can get a job and you could be solid right. without being the best coverage guy in the yeah. world. You know, now, what, what a lot of people don't realize too, is that after your first starting two linebackers, we're talking about core special teams players mm-hmm. and your third, fourth, fifth linebacker are going to be on just about every single special teams. They're going to be on, you know, um, pump block. They're going to be on punt return. They're going to be on kickoff. They're going to be on kickoff return. So, and you obviously you have to do, you have to, you have to put guys there, right? Yeah. Guys who guys who can tackle. So it's it's um, you know, it's important to have guys who can hustle, guys who can tackle well, and then where where wherever they need to develop, that's great and that's fine as long as they're the third, fourth, fifth linebackers on the team. It's okay at that point. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with that hundred percent, hundred percent, man. All right, dude. So uh, we got both things we covered. Got a little Tanner Muse. Got a little simulated pressures. Uh, have you? Let me ask you this: Have you put in any Raekwon McMillan tape in? Have you? Have you watched any? I have of it? not. I have not gone around to it. Did you watch him? I did. Actually, I did watch him. I, I was actually a little pleasant because I didn't even watch him against the run because I know he's good against the run. I'm not. Even, okay. I was like, I was like, okay, I get it. You, you're. He's. I mean, he's really, really good against the run. It's kind of. It's kind of like Dale. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, he's he's it's it's uh, he 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 knows what he's doing. He's very instinctive against the run too. Like he's it's it, it's rare that he's going to be out of place. It's rare that he's not going to be try, making some kind of disruptive play in there. Like he's like bona fide one of the best line, run run defending linebackers in the NFL. It's it's there. Uh, the more question is is him is in coverage, right? And I, I think which I'm probably going to do a little side breakdown for him too. What I think would happen if Corey Littleton or Kawakowski went down, I think the Raiders would be okay with Raekwon McMillan. I think he's a great depth guy. Now he's not the best coverage guy. And I understand that. this kind of just goes back to what I'm saying. He's not a, he's not a great coverage guy, but he, he's pretty good in zone because he's smart. So he understands things and he still runs a four, six. Like I, there's a play where he was, he was playing zone and John Brown came through his area and he was able to flip his hips and keep up with John Brown on the over route. And that's so what's his issue on coverage then. It's more about if he gets singled up in man to man and it's straight up that he doesn't have that excellent kind of, it's, it's hard to explain. Like he, he doesn't have that, that twitch to kind of just kind of change directions. And like, yeah. if, if he's going against a good tight end or something like that, I mean, like if, if like, he's not gonna be able to stop a tight end, you know, running routes or anything like that, a good okay. run, a route running tight end, he's not gonna be able to stop him, but in zone, he's fine. And that's what the Dolphins did. I mean, Brian Flores is a good coach. So he just hit him. He just made sure that he never put him in the position where he would be covering anybody. Right. Because if he did get in a position where he had to cover somebody, he could be a liability a little bit. But I mean, there was times where he did cover people and he looked okay. Right. So he's, he's kind of just inconsistent there and he's still young. So he still has the opportunity to kind of grow into uh, an all around linebacker a little bit. I think he still has that opportunity because he has the speed. He does have the, uh, have the athleticism, but he just has to, 
he has to kind of has to figure it out. I mean, he has to understand, understand leverage of routes, understand things like that to be a better defender against in man to man, but like in zone and, and stuff like that, he, he's perfectly fine. He, he'll, he'll like, if anybody crosses his area, he's, he'll pick them up. Um, he sees things in zone. And, mm-hmm. and I, I yeah, and, and I, I think a lot of things that go with Raekwon too is is a lot about effort. I think sometimes he just takes plays off, and it's usually really? the passing game is when he takes plays off, and that's a that's a big thing. And I think that's why the Dolphins don't like him too much because I, I, this one play, um, if you look it up against the Chargers, and Keenan Allen has his touchdown and gets brought back, and he's just like jogging behind Keenan Allen. He's just like jogging. He's literally. I'm surprised to hear that. I'm surprised to hear that they gave up draft capital for someone. I mean, everything I've heard about Raekwon McMillan, he's like incredible character. Yeah, that's all the things I've heard about him. So I'm I'm surprised to hear that. All right, uh, maybe well, he's heard in that play, but I don't, don't know. Don't 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 give it all up. Save save some for your for your side uh, breakdown here. Okay. Yeah 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 yeah. But you know, I I was wondering if you watched him. I mean, I I think that's I think it's an interesting pickup. And you know, I think he's a little better than you know p- people say. Okay, but that's that's what I was. I was a little pleasant. I I, I was expecting like so this guy dude to be like falling over himself in coverage, and you know the way that his they were talking about him. All Raider fans want to know is is he better than Tahir Whitehead? That's all they want to know. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, so we're good, 100%. guys. We're good. 100%. Raider Nation, we're good in every in every way, bro. I, I seen that comparison, but no, uh, no, okay. no way, bro. No way. Like, like I, that's what I'm saying. If, if if one of the two first, top two linebackers went down, I wouldn't feel that bad. I'd be like, okay, I know he has some limitations, but I mean, we're gonna be bona fide against the run. I think he's gonna play against. I mean, let's say, you know, the pa- Patriots gonna run the ball a lot, right? The Bills gonna run the ball a lot. Those teams, he's Saints, gonna be able to help there. Saints are gonna run the ball a lot. Yeah, people yeah, don't realize true. they are a big running team. Yeah, you know? that, that is true. Panthers are gonna run the ball a lot. Yeah, they're gonna run the ball a lot, and so. he's gonna help there. Like he, he, I mean, because Corey Littleton is is not the best run defender in the world, right? No. And Raycon McMillan is that fill in. He he, because he's gonna do the fill in and and make plays and and yeah. do things like that and and allow Corey and Base to, to do a lot more things in coverage and guard tight ends in base. And oh, I will say this, like you know. Like before, when I was looking at the linebacker room, you know, it's Nick Kukowski. He's all around. He's all around linebacker. I don't yeah. think that he's spectacular against the run. I don't think that he's spectacular against the pass. I think, honestly, his best quality is blitzing. Yeah. Um, but he's I good against the run. He's good against the pass. You know, mm-hmm. he's an all around guy. When, yeah. When you watch Corey Littleton, you know, he's not very good against the run. He's got to be a um, protective man in the front. He can't, you know, don't, you don't want to ask him to take on bloggers. But he yeah. can shoot through some gaps, you know, um, and make some plays against the run. But it's not super consistent in this game. Yeah. And then when you looked at Nicholas Morrow, he's another covered linebacker. Uh, Tanner Muse, he's a safety converted to linebacker, right? Yeah. Um, Javen White, another hybrid linebacker. I'm like, okay, are we, do we have any run stoppers? So when yeah. they sign Raekwon McMillan, I'm like, okay, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable with this linebacker unit because you got – you know, multiple flavors of guys here. Hundred percent. You know, so uh, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm more confident um, with the linebacker room after the addition of Raekwon McMillan. I'll say that. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. So it, I was very, I was like I said, I was pleasantly surprised. I was really expecting, you know, something something crazy. You know, because it was funny. I, I went to uh, Pro Football Focus and looked at their worst coverage games, and I watched watched the Bills game, and I was I was literally confused. I was like. I mean, it, it, you guys gave him like a thirty, and he, I'm like he, he's not doing that bad, you know what I mean? Like, so it it, it was it's. Do you believe he'll, in Pro Football Focus? Do you believe? Do I, be- do I believe in Pro Football Focus? Not their grades, now. No. but I, I do like I do like going there and kind of comparing it. I, I like just for my own, like yeah, I, I, like I, I like uh, you know, kind of like going through games and seeing you know. So I went through like their worst coverage games, and like whatever worst. Things yeah. and they were they were giving him targets that like he was in zone coverage, like one. T- I mean, I, I'm gonna go over some of this play, but you know, one time with John Josh Allen, like Josh Allen like zipped it past him in zone coverage. I'm like, I mean, it, only Josh Allen could have got that past him. Like, I don't know why you could call that a target. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah, it, it's weird. You know what I'm saying? And like, like he got a bad coverage grade because he missed a tackle on a on a fullback and the fullback got like 30 extra yards. 
So they just grade weird. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and the people that, that grade, the people that grade it are like not, you know, they're like 19 year old kids and stuff like that. So, yeah. So uh, <laughs> PFF doesn't like them, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I thought I, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was surprised. What about um, Tyrell Williams going to IR? Are you uh, worried? About the depth of the receiver room? Uh, no, no, because I, I really feel like that. I mean, we're we're going over all these rookies and stuff like that. And I really feel like it's just gonna be a Waller and Renfro world, anyways. I feel like that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna, we're you know, we're talking all these guys, and you know, we're hyping up all these rookies, and you know, going through training camp, and we're gonna get to week one, and Renfro and Waller probably gonna have seventeen targets in between them. You know, like and they're probably gonna interchange every week, like one week. Waller will get 10 and then Renfro will get seven. And then here's, Okada. here's something that I want, I want to know from okay. your perspective. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause some people start arguing with me on the timeline because I was saying that be- besides Edwards, the Raiders don't have an X receiver and people started saying Zay Jones is that guy. No, is Zay not. Jones an X to you? No, he's a Z. He's a Z. That's what, come on. He's a Z. <laughs> he's a Z. I mean, they, that's how they used him too. They moved him around. He was a Z last year for most of the time. He was, a, the he, was the Z, he was the Z last year, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, here, here's, here's why I think though. The reason why Williams was put on IR and they were okay with that is because if Brian Edwards say he gets hurt. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, you think Zay Jones is going to play the X or do you think Darren Waller will play the X? Darren Waller. Hundred percent. Right. I, I honestly think he's gonna play X week one. I think they're gonna come out in twelve. Have put Row as the blocker. Just, just, and I think that's their plan. I, I really think they put Williams and IR. They're like, well, we were planning to use Waller at X a lot more than people think. You're right. Because, yeah, and because you know, a lot of people don't realize that Jared Cook was the X. Right. That was he was the X. He was he was running X routes all year double moves all these things he ran all the deep routes he was yeah. the x right that year right so he was he was what that people guy. Oh, what, what, what tipped me off this too is how many tight ends they signed in the uh in the off season <laughs> i'm like all right darren waller's playing wide receiver this year <laughs> and and he's probably getting he's they probably he's probably doing what he did with antonio brown and he's designing yeah. the offense to go through yeah, Darren Waller. to go through Darren Waller, right? Right. Yeah, and and that's to be honest, I mean that's not dumb, right? Because all these other guys compliment him, right? So because you know we I expect Rugs to run a lot more crossers, crossers deep routes, yes, or a lot more intermediate stuff than deep routes. I really expect that. I don't, I don't really expect him to. I'm mean, of course he's gonna have some go routes. I, I understand that. Yeah, he, I don't he's gonna go routes. The plan for Rugs. Crossers and quick stuff and let him get yak. Yeah. That's the plan. And and if he's killing it like that, you know, they're going to gradually add more and more and more to his plate. But remember, he is, he still is a rookie and he's going to make a lot of big plays just off simple stuff, you know, (laughs) off simple stuff. And and Alabama didn't use him as a deep threat either. I mean, Devontae Smith was the deep guy and he was the intermediate short guy, even with the speed. I mean, he just, like I said, he's going to do some deep routes, um, but he, like against like LSU and Auburn and play teams like that, he wasn't he wasn't like running straight goes or straight go routes. It was a lot more intermediate comebacks, um, you know, some hitches, you know, some some uh, jerk routes, a lot of things like that that got him in space. So, and I I think I think that's what the Raiders are going to do too, and they're going to feed they're going to feed Waller. Let's they're just gonna, be real. Yeah, they're going to feed Waller. Yeah, they're going to feed I Waller agree. and Renfro. Those, like, I, you know, if it's two-minute drill, I mean, that's who Carr is going to. Carr is going to Renfro in two-minute drill. I mean, that's – Yeah. Right. It, 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 so much of that is just, you know, you can't expect a rookie to come in no offseason. Yeah. And, and then, you know, for a quarterback, any quarterback, to have the confidence to throw to these rookies. Um, I think we're going to see rookie production down this year just because of COVID. You know, just because the lack of the off season, it, it takes yeah. it takes time for a quarterback to develop that confidence in a player. To you know, um, when the situation, you know, when they need it the most to throw it to a guy. But uh, Carr has that with Waller. He has that with Renfro. So I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. 
Yeah, yeah, and it, it's that's just how I feel. I mean, I, I feel like they're every week they're gonna switch. Like one week, Rimfo's gonna get like ten targets, or maybe even more than ten. And then Waller's gonna get ten, and then they're kind of gonna go back and forth, and it's gonna be in between those guys with those other guys complementing in, right? And it, it maybe one week Rugs does get in to get ten, ten targets if you go into the season, and he opens it up a little bit more. But it, it's 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 gonna be a Darren Waller world until. Further notice and until, I don't, until I, Ruggs is ready, right? Yeah, and I, I, I don't see, I don't see why, why not, at this point. So, right. All right, all right, man. Uh, what else do we got? Any, any other thoughts? What do you think about Prince getting cut? Um, I've never been a Prince of Mukamara fan since he gets drafted. <laughs> I've been on record saying this. Okay, I am so happy. <laughs> That, because look, here's my, here's my opinion, okay. And look, I'm I'm being upset. I'm being I'm I'm being uh, over the top on Prince Mukumar. Obviously, he belongs in the NFL. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the fact that the Raiders feel confident enough with the corners that they have right now to let Mukumar walk means we got some okay depth. All right, let's just put it like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, these guys are show, these guys are showing enough here because. Prince of Mukamara is like, you know, he, he belongs in the NFL, but he doesn't make an impact in the NFL. Yeah. So if, you know, if any team that he's on and he's the number two corner, the cornerback depth's not great. Uh, sure. so, so, you know, it, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, um, it's, it's a good indictment of where the corners are right now that Prince of Mukamara got cut. Okay. All right, man. All right, cool. All right. Uh, well, that's about it, guys. Uh, you know, thank you for li- listening to us again. Make sure you hit subscribe. Hit the subscribe button at the bottom. Make sure you follow us on Apple. Download on Spotify. You can listen to us. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, the, the video experience is always the best experience, but we are available for your for your long rides and your your road trips and all that good stuff. Uh, make sure you follow me at the Mark John NFL. The Mark John NFL. Make sure you follow BD at BD Williams 18 at bd williams 18 like i said if you are new here hit that subscribe button uh keep us growing we appreciate the people that already have subscribed um you know what i'm saying we want to you know build this up teach you guys as much as possible hopefully you're learning something from us and uh, i mean that, that's our whole goal is to kind of you know get raider nation a little bit you know a little educated on schemes and stuff like that so we really appreciate you guys joining us so uh any final words bd that's it guys if you love ball you know tape don't lie come uh come and watch us on youtube Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. So, like I said, thank you for watching. See you next week. Take care.